Hello ladies and gentlemen. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go through uh, just a short little bit of the line of questioning that Congress did with the uh, FBI Director Ray and the Secret Service Kimberly Cheadle. And uh, as they are answering questions, I'm going to break it down and give you what my uh, response is from Mr. Dadbot's perspective, what I think they're actually saying. So without further ado, here we go. Here, and I appreciate the Chairman giving me this because I've got to uh, leave. But uh, let me ask this question. Why doesn't the FBI disclose to the American people all of the investigative detail and evidence that you are gathering as it is gathered? Well, we have tried to be transparent uh, with both Congress and the American people as we're going along in the investigation, frankly, unusually so for an ongoing investigation given the sheer nature uh, of it. Uh, we have provided a lot of information. I expect to continue to provide information. I expect to be able to provide some additional information here today uh, in response to your questions and your colleagues. Uh, but part of the issue uh, is that, as like in any investigation, as we proceed, facts evolve. Uh, our understanding of what somebody said turns out to have more context than we didn't have before. Uh, we have additional leads out there. So part of our goal is not just to respect the ongoing investigation process, but also to make sure that we don't prematurely provide information that then two days later turns out to be different than what we told people. So basically what I gather from that is basically um, in their cover up and their synopsis of what's going on, they don't want to release any information that hasn't been released to the public already. So that way it doesn't look suspicious like in September 11th when they had uh, Building 7 collapse uh, in Europe but yet hadn't collapsed yet in the United States. So they don't want to release something that they should not have had just yet they want to keep that a secret until it's been released that way everybody has seen it then they can you know keep up with their scenario based situation let's keep going because that's very much uh you know kind of a natural part of any investigation so did crooks fire eight shots we have recovered uh eight cartridges on the roof why was Crooks allowed to get off eight shots? Well, that I think is something we're still digging into. Um, again, maybe this is a good place for me to... So basically, um, the shooter was able to shoot eight times. Uh, and his response is probably going to be different, but the, the response that he should be saying is they wanted to make sure that this kid could hit President Trump um, as many times as possible before they took him out. So let's keep going. Make clear uh, the different investigations that are going on. So because certainly I understand. Well, the, I, and I, yeah. and given that I've only got three minutes left, okay. and I know other members, I'm, I'm really interested because I, I appreciate your invitation. You said you're prepared to disclose things as questions are asked. So I don't want to waste time, sort of, I just want to get to the questions that might, and as many members as can ask questions that you'll answer. I actually think you, I'd be glad for you to go on soliloquy, frankly, and, and tell us what you know. I think the American people want to know. Why was President Trump not kept off the stage? We don't know the answer to that, but I want to be clear, and this is important, because I think it goes to questions that I can and cannot answer. Our investigation, the FBI's mandate, is focused on the shooter and all things related to his attack. Now, obviously, I understand very much the intense interest and focus on the Secret Service's performance, actions, the sit So what that breaks down to is uh, we're not going to do anything, we're not going to look into anything, we're just going to make up some bogus statements here for Congress today, make it look like we're giving you some information, but we are not going to really investigate this in any way, shape, or form. We'll blame it on the Secret Service. Decision making, etc. There are two separate after action reviews, the, the DHS Inspector General and the outside independent panel that can be that are focused on that. Now, our everybody understands will, it. Everybody understands it. Right. Here's yeah. the problem. We're out 13 days, 
and you say we've been uh, disclosing, you know, we had the uh, director, uh, the colonel from the uh, PS, uh, Pennsylvania State Police in front of Homeland yesterday, he was quite candid. He disclosed to us that Butler Emergency Services Unit personnel were posted into the windows on the second floor of the AGR building, that they left there to go pursue the person that they spotted, Crooks, that they texted a photo of Crooks to the, P to the uh, uh, PSP representative in the command center. That information was relayed to the United States Secret Service. They asked that it be texted to someone else. That was many minutes before President Trump took the stand. What we don't know is why did he not, why did he, why were they not keeping him off the stand? And to the extent, you know, the, I know we always hear when there's a criminal investigation, you've got to wait for that to develop. But the, do you have any reason to, are you, do you have any other target of your criminal investigation other than Crooks, who's dead? So what that translates to is, uh, a lot of people don't know this, they knew about the threat three hours in advance. And they knew that he was on the building with a weapon up to 30 minutes in advance and still allowed the president to go up and give a speech. Why is that? Well, the same can be said for the reason that he was able to shoot eight times before he was neutralized. So, it's absolutely crazy to think that they had knowledge of this kid and the threat up to three hours before it happened. Let's keep going. We are investigating the shooter both to determine his motive uh, and his preparations and activities before the shooting, but also to make sure uh, whether or not there are any co-conspirators, accomplices. At this that, point, have you developed any evidence to so suggest that there are any accomplices or, or cooperators or assisters? Not at this time, but again, okay. the investigation's ongoing. So here's the thing. While we wait, maybe for months, and I hate to say this, just I'm not trying to take a pot shot, but we, the country went for years with the uh, understanding that the Hunter Biden laptop was Russian disinformation as offered by respected former intel officials, and the whole time the FBI had the laptop and then let that happen in public until finally offering testimony in a case. To the degree we wait to hear as a country and as a Congress what has happened in this event, because the FBI is con conducting an investigation, it provides quarter for the U.S. Secret Service not perhaps to reckon with the problems that are obvious to everyone. So he basically just answered that same question. Uh, the FBI being in charge of this investigation, um, basically they will do an investigation, they will have information, but they will not release it to the American people. Basically what they will do is they will form a committee and they will lock up the evidence for 75 years so that way anybody who was involved will either be dead or dying by the time we're able to really investigate it. Uh, and that's a thing that they like to do in our current government uh, with September 11th, with the vid, with uh, JFK, with anything, is they lock up the records for 75 years so that way it cannot be investigated. That way, when we do investigate it, everybody who was a team player is either dead or dying by that time. Uh, so basically, he just answered that question. He is not going to really do an investigation. They're going to make it look good. And anything and everything they can, they will blame on the Secret Service because they already had the fall guy, which was Kimberly Cheadle. She has already resigned and stepped down. So what more can you really do to her, right? She already lost her job. She's out of there. So they already have the fall guy and the shooter is dead. So therefore, there's really nothing to investigate. All doors are cut, shut, and dried up for them. So there is nothing to really investigate. They'll just keep telling Congress and the American people that they're looking into it and it's an ongoing investigation, but that's just a way for them to evade questions and answers. Let's keep going. So, let's get a couple in while I, uh, I've got 13 more seconds. One more question, perhaps. Uh, Senator Grassley says that the records of the day show that there was a counter unmanned aerial surveillance operator on site. Was there? And why did that person not prevent crooks from being able to use a drone so again questions about the Secret Service's performance are better directed to those other reviews what I can tell you when it comes to drones is that crooks himself 
had a drone and I'm prepared to answer questions here today about the shooter and his use of the drone, for example. My time's expired. So there's all these different videos of all these different congressmen and everybody who have asked him questions and uh, his answers and his responses. Let's uh, do Matt Gates, for instance. Was the shooter on the FBI's radar in any way prior to the assassination attempt? We did not have any information uh, about the shooter. He was not in our holdings um, before the shooting. No communication in any chat rooms, no CIs or confidential human sources have any interaction? No, we've run a, a thorough search uh, for the, the subject through all of our holdings and, and he was not in them anywhere. So what that breaks down to is they went ahead and they scrubbed any information that they had on this kid and removed it from any databases where they had communications with him so that way they could not link him back to the FBI and the CIA. Were there any FBI agents or informants present at the Trump rally in Butler? Not to my knowledge. Uh, and Mr. Jordan was talking to you about Iran. Were law enforcement resources diverted from the protection of President Trump to John Bolton as a consequence of concern that Mr. Bolton might have been the target of, of Iranian uh, malign efforts? Uh, that's really a Secret Service decision. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, that's really something they would know better. What I can tell you is that um, there are a number of individuals, you mentioned one who have brought a case, uh, a specific criminal case for the Iranians targeting for assassination, but how- Are you gonna, are you gonna get that answer to us, whether or not resources were diverted from Trump to Bolton? Is that just gonna be part of your review? Uh, I think that's going to be part of the reviews by the inspector, the, the inspector general- the Inspector and general the, for after, DHS, right? Of DHS, right. And, and, the, and, and, and the outside panel- it. I think that's an important point because the inspector general for DHS has really fallen out of favor with the administration because he's been pointing out the problems on the border with Mayorkas and Biden and, we're always kind of worried that they're about to fire him, which would be a really bad idea now that this role that you've identified is... is so basically, there you have it again, once again. The uh, They're talking about firing this guy. They fired Kimberly Cheadle, and his responses are always, it's an ongoing investigation, and it was the Secret Service fault. So do you see a pattern here where there's no one to blame. They're firing or getting rid of the people who would have any answers to these questions. And the people who are in charge of the investigation are constantly, well, it's an open investigation, so we can't shed light on that, or this is going on. And like I said, and mark my words, I guarantee you here shortly, they will say that they had to lock up the records for 75 years. So critical. Be, be a bad idea to fire the IG from DHS during the pendency of this, right, Mr. Director? I don't think that would be a good idea. I'm, I'm with you on that. So I want to zoom out a little bit. How often do you brief President Biden? Uh, you mean on this no, just general, case? No, in your role as FBI. I mean, I, I don't know that I could give you a number. I've Is it like I, weekly, monthly, daily? It's, it's not... It's not at a regular cadence. There have been times when there have been months at a time when I haven't, and then there have been times when several days apart I have. Uh, it's all That translates to uh, Biden's always on vacation or at his Delaware home or somewhere else other than the White House, so he doesn't have a chance to talk to him about things that are actually going on, nor does he care to have any interaction with Biden because he has no clue what's going on. What the main question should have been was, is how often does the FBI director communicate with Barack Obama? Always with other people. Uh, the vice president, is she typically there? Uh, often has been. Okay, so, so when did you notice his decline? Uh, I, in my interactions, in my role, uh, all my interactions with the current president have been completely professional. Right, but I mean his the cognitive decline. I don't say he treated you unprofessionally, just maybe not picking things up as quickly as he used to. Again, I, I don't meet with him very often, uh, but what you're describing is not something that I've observed during my interactions with him. I mean, we've, we've had it observed so often that the ranking member and Mr. Schiff on this committee have said that he could no longer continue as a candidate. And so, since you're the FBI director, I was just sort of wondering, like, who's running the country? So basically, 
Christopher Ray's top man, Robert Herr, uh, did an, inve uh, an investigation into Biden and said that he was unfit to stand trial for any of his crimes because of his cognitive ability and they forced him out of running for president because of his cognitive decline but the leader the of the fbi mr ray here has no idea about his cognitive decline at all even though he has briefings with him uh daily or monthly or weekly um and he says that he doesn't know uh, how often that is, it's because he's actually meeting with Barack Obama, who's running things secretly behind closed doors. Like if something, if something, yeah, so if, if something bad happened, you'd have to go brief President Biden about it right now? God and, forbid? And I, on any number of occasions, I have briefed the President, and as I said, those briefings have all been uneventful and unremarkable. Well, I, I, I can imagine them being uneventful. Um, the but but in in the work where the vice president's also present, like you say, there's like more than half the time there's these briefings. She's there too. I don't know if I said more than half the time. Certainly, there have been times where she's been present. There've been other times where she hasn't. I take you at your word when you say this is the most complicated threat environment you've ever observed over a long career in law enforcement, and I'm just kind of wondering with this assassination attempt, with the invasion at our border, with all the Hamas that have been let in that you've talked about and briefed about, like, is Biden up to it? And if he's not up to it, and you're a guy who's been regularly briefing him, like, who, who's who been in on this conspiracy to hide the real Joe Biden from all of us for years? It, it never occurred to you that this guy wasn't up to it in all these briefings you did? As I said, my briefings with the president have all been completely fine. Um, Were they between briefed, 10 a.m. and He's asked questions. It, there hasn't been anything of note in the area that you're talking about. Yeah, did, did you ever have to brief him before 10 a.m. or after 4 p.m.? We hear those are as good hours. I can't, I've certainly, times that I have briefed have included outside those hours. Right. Okay. I just, you know, I, I think the American people want to know how we got to this point with someone who's very so diminished his own party has basically put him out to pasture. And since you had close proximity and the vice president had close proximity, I'm just kind of wondering if uh, if you were being straight with all of us about how things were going with him. I guess we'll have to figure that you out. You can count on me to be straight with you, sir. Uh, we'll see. So we're gonna go ahead and pause it right there. So basically, as you can see, uh, it's always going to be an ongoing investigation or it's going to be we're blaming it on the Secret Service or it's going to be it was uh, the Secret Service Kimberly Cheadle who's been fired or the Director of Homeland Security who has been impeached or it's going to be someone else's problem of why this is going on. You'll never get any answers, any straight answers anyways, of what's really going on. That was just 14 minutes or so of the questioning that they did for um, the head of the FBI and like I said in that questioning there was no answers uh, for the American people or for Congress it was all just smoke and mirrors because he had to be there or he could be held in contempt and now they have forced Joe Biden to step down for running for the president with uh, only a hundred and some days left before the election and they've installed Kamala Harris as the Democrat nominee, which is against the Constitution, uh, and transferring hundreds of millions of dollars to her campaign out of Joe Biden's campaign is illegal as well. Uh, if we remember, uh, Donald Trump transferred $30,000 to his attorney from his campaign fund, and he was indicted, and they were talking about giving him 700 years in prison. Uh, what is the charge for moving $100 million from one candidate's um, account to the other? That should be uh, looked into for sure. But like I said, this was just a short video to show you kind of how these investigations really go down and what's really going on behind closed doors. We will never know the answer. I'm quite certain of it unless... Donald Trump gets elected and finally shares everything with the American people that they've been hiding from us for years. So, uh, like I said, this was just a short video. Like, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Have a good day.